What is going on everybody? Nick here and today I am going over with everyone how to run your boat safely at nighttime. Um, you can see it's daytime right now and that is because when you're running at nighttime to do it properly you need to be using a radar and the best way to learn how to use a radar is to go out in the daytime when you can see everything, see the objects around you and your surroundings and then compare that to what you're seeing on your radar screen. That way you learn how to discern what's an object and what isn't, you know, how uh, sensitive the radar is and everything uh, because if you go out at nighttime and try to use your radar for the first time without knowing what you're doing and you really don't know how to discern what's objects and what isn't um, it's gonna end up as a pretty bad situation for you and whoever or whatever you hit um, so that's just a bad idea altogether and so I'm gonna run everyone through how to use the radar here and then I'm gonna pick this back up tonight when it's dark to give you you know a real-time hands-on what I'm doing what I'm looking for and how I set everything up to run at nighttime so let's go ahead and get right on into the radar. And one thing to address too, is I know that there's a lot of people out there who's like, oh, I don't need a radar, you know, I can see fine at nighttime, you know, blah, 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 there's enough light. Which, in city situations is fine. You know, you're cruising Miami at nighttime, yeah, there's enough light pollution, you can see everything. Here in Melbourne even, you know, our entire river here is lined on all sides with the town and houses. So there's enough light pollution here, and with the sun reflecting off the moon, you know, like, yes, I can go out here and see fine. I could, in pretty good confidence, navigate this boat around without a radar. I would know where I'm going. I could see objects on the water. It wouldn't be an issue. But this boat spends, you know, three months of this year in the Bahamas where there's no light pollution. And, you know, when you get close to a new moon, you can't see anything out there, you know. And when we go over there, my family, we like to go out to dinner on the boat. We stay at Treasure. We go out to Guana, Marsh Harbor, Elba, whatever it is. Um, and so when we're doing that, we don't see anything. And so I am strictly running by instruments when I do that. And now I know that water like the back of my hand. I know where the sandbars are. I know where the islands are. So local knowledge plays into it. But, and that's, that's when it becomes imperative. I run strictly off my chart and strictly off my radar. I'm relying solely on what my radar's telling me. If I had a malfunction and my radar didn't pick up anything, which is not how radar works, but if it didn't pick up a boat in the water, I would hit them. Um, or if I just didn't know how to read it, I didn't know how to discern what a boat was due to what a wave was if I had my wave clutter turned off. Um, and so it's very important to know how to use a radar, even if you say you don't need it. Because you get in a position, it's a new moon, there's not a lot of light around, and you have to get home. Um, and so I just needed to mention that, that to address those issues that I know people are going to bring up. So let's go and get into it. So the first thing that you need to understand uh, when you first turn your radar on is, you know, all the different settings and clutters and gains and filters and all of that that you can put on your radar. You know, you can address the rain clutter, the sea clutter, up and down on the gain, bird mode, the different filters and all that's great. It all has its purpose. But for the everyday boater who just wants to go run at nighttime and go to a bar or a restaurant or a friend's house, um, literally just put in auto high. You don't need any extra settings. You're not going to be out in crazy stuff where sea clutter is going to be an issue. Put an auto high and let the radar technology do the work. All the modern radars, the auto is fantastic. Auto high is all you need to learn. Um, maybe in the future I'll make another video on you know the gain and the clutter and the rain and all that good stuff and how to use that and what situations that is useful for. But for the everyday boater, keep it in auto high. That will do 99% of what you want it to do. I just needed I need to note that real quick. Okay, so we're looking at the radar here, and the very first thing to know is that you know what's on because it's coming up with the red. Those are your objects, but you need to also learn how to tell distance on it. And this is a Garmin unit, but they're all pretty much the same. Down here, it'll show you the distance. You can see I have this one set to one and a half nautical miles right now with half nautical mile rings. And what that means is this main ring out here, that's going to be your, your distance that's labeled, your one and a half nautical miles. And then the inside rings, it's all going to be this ring distance. So each one of these is a half a mile. So you have half a mile, one mile, one and a half mile. And you can see here, that's going to tell you how far out objects are. And your objects, they're going to show up as these red dots. Solid objects will show up as red dots. You know, the more red it is, the more solid the object is. And so you can see here, I'm picking up this and this and this. These two are actually channel markers, which I don't know if you can see out there. There's also a boat running that I'm picking up. I can see this is a boat because if you watch, it's getting close. This is a channel marker. Watch this object. It's getting progressively closer and closer to this channel marker. I know that that's a boat. You can see it's passing in now. 
But everything else, these little dots, it's either a boat or a channel marker. So naturally when you're driving, you want to stay away from those and don't hit those. And this is actually accurate to pretty close in. You know, I can go all the way here. You know, I'm at quarter mile rings right now. I mean, quarter mile total distance, eighth mile rings. So eighth mile, quarter mile. And you see, if I pan out here, I'm still picking up my channel marker and this boat moving. This is a buoy. You see, you can clearly see the boat moving away. So you can see it's pretty easy to pick up objects, boats moving. The current radars are very sensitive and they're very good at picking up. You know, even channel markers, crab balls, buoys, whatever it is in the water. Um, like you saw, you get to see that boat progressively passing that channel marker. So it's not hard, you know, at the very, very base of it. Look at those red, anything red on the map, stay away from. Any marks on the map, stay away from. Even some of the, it, some of them will show up more, you know, green, yellow, bluish. And blues typically will be very small, so if rain will show up blue um, if it's very light. Um, but any of those, stay away from them. And especially at nighttime, which I'll go over tonight, use your rings to keep a safe distance. You know, I have mine at half mile rings right now but I can change, you know, to quarter mile rings and I can make that my zone. You know, I don't want to get within a quarter mile of another boat because it's nighttime, who really knows what's going on. And so basically it's as simple as that. Pick up your objects in the water and know where they are. Use your rings to know the distance from these objects and then steer clear of them and keep an eye on your radar. You know, if you're out in the ocean nighttime, you can look out all you want. You're not going to see anything that's really usable. Your radar is your best friend. And when it comes to Coast Guard regs, um, actually, if you were to, technically speaking, get into a crash or something, per the rules, they would rather you rely on your radar than your own eyes, um, which is kind of crazy, but the radars are accurate. You know, it's, it's, it's a spinny thing that's pinging stuff. If it pings something, it's because it sees something. Um, it's as easy as that. And also, know how to pick up land masses. It's very straightforward. You know, here we have the mainland Tierra Mobile. This is Merritt Island. You can come down here. We have Dragon Point. This is a causeway. Um, I don't know if you can see it out there, but there are sailboat races going on way over there. And you can even see here that we're picking up, and they're little sailboats, so it's not picking up the individual sailboats, but these clumps right here are the sailboats. This one is an anchor sailboat, but these ones are the little clumps of sailboats that are out there racing. Um, and it's as simple as that. And you know, when you really want to get you know, if it's an unfamiliar waters or you want to see depth charts too to make sure you're not going too shallow, you know, all the modern GPS units, Garmin, Simrad, Raymarine, um, Faruna, whatever you have, if you go to radar here, you can do overlays. Um, I prefer a split screen and by that I mean I'll go chart and radar next to each other. And you can see if I zoom out here, it's the same image on both the radar and the chart. Mainland here, mainland here, Merritt Island here, Merritt Island here, bridge here, bridge here, opening here, opening here. It's the same image. So you can either learn how to, you know, put them side by side and compare what you see. Or what a lot of people like to do is if you go to your radar options here, you can just overlay that radar right on top of your chart. And you can see how accurate, you know, the radars are these days. It's almost perfectly following the coastline, perfectly following the coastline. Um, you know, you see here your bridges, your openings. Um, the current technology really makes it easy for you. And what you will notice here is the radar is not picking up this land. It's because the radar uses a direct line. So we're right here. This land is in between us and this land. So this land is blocking like 99% of our radar waves that are going out. So they hit here and they bounce back. So they don't get a chance to uh, come and notice this land and bounce back off to the boat. Um, so that's one thing to know, you know, like say I, you know, was going to come around here. I was coming around a point. The minute you turn that point, your radar is going to start picking up a whole lot more stuff. It's going to start picking up all of this. So you have to be very cautious when coming around points like that. That's going to block your radar from seeing what's beyond that point. It's just something to know. So as I was saying, it's very easy. Anyone can do it. Um, now that we have the basics down, I'm going to go and get some dinner. Once the sun falls and it gets dark, I'll bring y'all back out here and show you in real time exactly what I'm doing to know that I'm navigating safely and I'm not going to hit anything in the water. Uh, so I'll catch back up with y'all and in my time it'll be like two hours in your time it'll be the flight. See y'all in a second. What is going on everyone? And I am back and it is now nighttime. As you can see, 
Um, and the first thing that you want to worry about when you get out here at nighttime is that you're legal to be out. Um, per the regulations, to go run at nighttime, you have to have running lights. And what that is, you have to have a red light on your port side, a green light on your starboard side, that from straight forward, go 112 and a half degrees back each side. At least I think that's the degrees. I have to double check. Um, and then also a white light that is visible from 360 degrees, or once you get up to this size of the boat, it's two white lights, one that faces forward, um, and then one that faces backwards. Um, and I forget the, actual, the degrees on those. But that's first thing, make sure you're legal. So once you make sure you're legal and everything, the next thing you're gonna wanna do is turn every light that you do not need off on your boat. Um, any light is gonna hinder your night vision. Now I have mine on right now, so y'all can see me and I'm really not worried, I can see everything. Um, and I have my radar on, but again, you wanna have the best night vision possible for you know the case that you see something in the water that you didn't pick up on your radar, that's on the chart whatever it is. You want your night vision to be best, turn every light off. You can see here for me, on my throttles here, I have my brightness turned out the lowest possible. My Garmin's, they're both on night mode. This little, my steering sensor thing, I have that as dark as it goes. I have this as completely off the trim tabs because I'm not using them. If I was though, I would go ahead and turn them as dark as possible get rid of every single light and if you need to have a light make it a red light uh red light it doesn't really hinder your night vision as much as the other wavelengths um i forget if it's the higher or lower wavelength whatever it is um red vision hinders your night vision the least so if you have to have a light on to see or read a chart whatever it is use a red light anything else is going to just destroy your night vision okay and so the last thing that i want to go over uh, before we actually get into the actual navigation aspect of this is speed. Um, speed is not your friend at nighttime. Uh, there's an old saying, you know, don't go faster than you're willing to hit something, which is partly true, you know, at nighttime, your chances of hitting something are significantly higher because you can't see anything. That's, you know, say something was submerged just below the surface. Um, and also, you know, people come out here and don't know what they're doing. Uh, so your chances are definitely higher. However, you know, you know, when I run at nighttime, I'll happily run 30 knots. You know, do I want to hit something at 30 knots? No, I'd feel much more comfortable hitting something at five knots. But I feel comfortable in my own abilities. You have to assess your own abilities. I've been doing this since I was two years old. Um, I have a boat that's extremely equipped to be able to run at nighttime. And so I feel comfortable running at 30 knots. And so I feel like a more well-rounded rule of thumb is assess your own abilities truthfully and do not run faster then you believe, you know, your skill level is at. And if you're new at this, chances are that's a very slow speed, you know, probably not even on plane. Um, and then as you get better, you can start moving faster and faster. I still don't think I would ever push it above 30, 35 knots. Um, I don't think it's worth it. Too much stuff can go wrong at night, um, but I digress. Moral of the story, assess your own abilities and speed is not your friend at nighttime. Keep that in mind. All right, so once we have that down, let's get into the navigation. So I have us, situated in an area here where it's pretty tight quarters on purpose there's a lot of stuff around for the radar to pick up that i can show you all what's going on there's a bridge there's a couple sailboats um there's a couple channel markers um actually a boat just headed out so i'll be able to pick them up as well um i don't even know where they went i see i'll get them on the radar here in a second but more of the story know your surroundings so i'll turn it on to my radar right here so we're on my radar now, and I have us here. As you saw earlier in the day, we were further this way, running right here by Dragon Point. And I have my rings right now. I'm at a half mile total range, so my rings right now are at a quarter mile, because there's only one ring in between the two. And so you can see, I'm picking up a bunch of stuff here. I have these, which I know for, just from local knowledge, these are channel markers. This is a channel marker. This is an old derelict sailboat that has been here for freaking ages, man. And this is a big sporty that just passed me that is headed out that away up north and so i see that in this here too this is a can that we have in the water here's upside down this area here used to be designated as a ski lane in the river and so they had these cans to mark it i have no clue if it's still designated that because the storm washed away both of them most of them and they put them back and see here we have another boat anchored it's quite large and you can see the shape of the boat whereas these are circles and even if i zoom in here this is dragon point there are two signs you can see the no wake sign right here along with the channel marker right here 
So you can see these radars are pretty damn accurate and they can really pick up your general surroundings of what's around. Um, and something to note as well, let me go to the actual radar overlay, chart overlay I mean, radar overlay. So you can see a way to tell kind of what's a boat and what's something floating that's not marked is you can see here, you know, with the land is, the chart shows those land, there's the bridge here, here's Mary Island. However, you can see like this spot here, that is that sailboat, there's nothing on the chart. The chart showing that that's just water. These are no wake signs, which are not marked on the chart. I know that because I'm from here, but again, stuff like that where there's not a marking on the chart but your radar is picking up something that's an area where you're going to want to kind of stay away from steer clearer than usual because that's a situation where you don't really know what it is or kind of if there's a line coming off of it or what it is if it's something marked like this like land you're pretty safe getting you know as close as if you're comfortable because you know the chart is showing it as well as the radar and like you can see here again this is there's nothing just a boat. There's nothing marked there, but I'm picking up something on the radar. So it's a boat floating. So you need to be able to come good at kind of picking out what's what just by kind of comparing your chart and the radar. And again, with mono radar, as you can see, like this is the shape of a boat. It's a boat. Um, so that's kind of where that's at. And so once you get to that point, you know, we're on the chart, you can pick out what's what, you know how to tell how far it is from you, you know, use the rings. My rings are set to a quarter mile right now. So I know that stuff around me is, you know, I can assess if it's in between me and the quarter mile uh, circle, it's going to be an eighth mile. Um, if it's on that, it's going to be a quarter mile away. If it's in between that and the half mile, it's going to be, you know, three eighths um, of an nautical mile away from me. So once you know how to do that, pick up objects and tell how far they are away from you. It's really as simple as getting out there and practicing and just making sure you steer clear of any possible obstruction that your radar and chart combo together are showing you. It's not hard, it just takes a lot of practice to be able to become to be able to be comfortable with it. And then, you know, when you're running around, you're gonna be find yourself looking out, looking out on the water quite a bit. Oh, let me see, you know, I don't trust it completely. It takes a while to get to the point where you feel comfortable running just staring at your radar and your navigation equipment. You know, like me, when I'm running in the Bahamas, like I mentioned earlier, where I can't see anything, my eyes are locked on my my chart and my radar. They don't leave. I look out occasionally just to look out, but 100% of my navigation is done with my instruments. That's a level of comfort that you need to get yourself, you know, to if you want to be able to do this regularly. Um, and like I said, it's not hard. Once you pick it up, you're golden. Just get out there and practice. And so that's pretty much it. That's really all there is to it. It's not hard. And so just a quick rundown. You know, one, make sure you're legal. Have your all your running lights and nighttime running gear, you know, your 360, your port and starboard, red and green. Um, make sure that to save your night vision, you have everything turned off, all lights turned off as possible and all navigation equipment and screens as low as possible. And then from that point on, it's just getting to know your radar, being able to pick out what is what on the radar, how far it is from you, and then how to navigate the boat in between it. Um, it's not hard, it just takes practice. Um, if anyone has any more questions about the process or what goes into it or how I do it in certain situations, feel free to comment about that. Um, I'll be happy to make extra videos more in depth on how to use certain radar features, clutter, gain, you know, how comfortable I feel in what situations, all of that good stuff. Just shoot a comment down below and I'll make a quick video about it or I'll message you back about it. And another thing is I really appreciate it if you watch this far to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's a new channel. I'm really trying to push out as much boating content as possible. Um, I really want this to take off because I love boating. Um, and I would love to kind of bring my boating knowledge I've picked up over the years to anyone who's, re you know, receptive to it. So a subscribe would be perfect. You know, like the videos. That's what I ask of you. Um, that's all that I have for today. Um, look forward to an, the next video coming in the next couple days or the next week. Have a good night.